It's key and Adafruit present. On NPR. All right, this week, Lady is from Maxim Integrated. That's right. What is the NPI of this week? Okay, this week's NPI is the Max 2361. And you're probably wondering, what is this? Well, it's this little chip uh, that is a boost converter. And it's a specific kind of boost converter. Well, what kind? I'd love to tell you, but you know what day it is today? I don't know. It's Earth Day. All right. It's Earth Day today. This is, a, this is an eco-friendly I feel day. like we can be a little better to Earth on Earth Day. I, I think so, too. And uh, one of the ways we can be good to the Earth is by using the sun. That's right. Our bit best friend, Mr. Sun, which uh, is the source of all life on Earth, can also be used to power electronic projects and sensors. And you can do that using solar panels. And so this is some, this is some nice big solar panel cells that we've got in the shop. And um, we also stock a solar charger kit. We actually have uh, two different ones. And um, the solar charger kits that we've got, um, they're specifically for larger panels. Like you can see like physically quite large panels that would go on like a backpack or like a box or, you know, you see these uh, outside, they, they power, um, you know, air quality sensors and stuff on the street. And this boost converter, the Max uh, 20, 20, 20361, 20361, is a specific type of boost converter that is designed for use with very small solar panels to charge up a small LiPo battery or a super capacitor. Um, and why do you need a special boost converter? Well, I love showing this curve of solar cell uh, information. So this is one cell. So a single cell has an open voltage. Like if, there's, if, there is, if it's in the sun and there's no current being drawn from it, it's about like 0.6 or 0.7 volts. So if you start from the right of this graph and you um, move up, you'll see that as you draw um, as you draw more and more current, um, the voltage, like the, you know, you quickly go up. You can quickly uh, as you start drawing current, the voltage, um, the the current goes up. The voltage moves to the left. It goes down, 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 and then where you see that kind of like line that kind of is going through all the curves that's the max power point because if you draw too much current from a solar cell what happens is the voltage collapses it goes you can see how flat it is at the top it goes very quickly from about 0.5 volts to 0.43 volts and then you draw even a little bit more current and like boom you're at zero volts so you have to be very very careful about how much current you draw from a solar cell because you want to be where that like that black line that's cutting through all of the curve, the, the rainbow curves is, that's your max power point. That's the point where if you are drawing that much current from that much voltage, you're gonna get the most power out of the cell. If you draw less current, you're losing power, you're leaving power on the table. If you draw any more, your um, voltage will collapse and you won't get any power at all. So, right, it's, it's very, very sensitive and it isn't a fixed, voltage it depends and the fixed current it depends on how much sunlight there is on a very bright day it's going to be that red curve on a cloudy day it's going to be like that light blue curve in the middle right it depends on how much current you can draw um so this boost converter uh, you can see on the left top left corner you can see there's a little like a diode thing with rays coming into it it's a, the inverse of an led it's a it's a solar cell so you can connect a couple solar cells together and this is a very small chip it's very simple but it's very effective it monitors the voltage it monitors the temperature you can program it over i squared c to give it uh some details about how much max current and what the output voltage you want the boost converter to be and it will give you um that output voltage and will also even wake up your circuit when it's you know gotten to a certain charge rate so that'll, that'll keep your circuit from waking up unexpectedly like before the, the battery's fully charged you want to wait till the battery's fully charged and then you want your sensor to wake up and then maybe send uh you know bluetooth energy data or LoRa or cellular or wi-fi um, and it's pretty efficient it does a really good job you can check it out they've got a lot of specifications for all the different you know boost peak currents which you can configure because you know you want to make sure that you don't overcharge your little battery as well it's just, it's it's a delicate game right you want to get as much current out of the solar panel but you don't want to overwhelm your battery um they make a really great eval board for this which i do recommend i'll, I'll show, show it on the overhead later since um i want to show it in the very middle is the tiny little chip 
And on uh, the top right there is actually the solar cell. So the solar cell here is, is, it looks a little bit like an OLED. It's quite small. It's a single, looks like a single cell. Um, the eval board comes with like an FT232 type dongly thing. You plug it in and you can configure it. Um, I do recommend the eval board because this chip is so small and you'll want to really configure it and play with it um, before you decide on what kind of battery or super capacitor you go with. Uh, it also has this cool mode where after you've set, you know, you use like the GUI to set the specifications for what you want your boost converter to do. Um, then you can go back and look at the registers to see what register values you've programmed in, which is like really smart because obviously once you've got it to where you want, then you want to dump that data into your microcontroller uh, to program it in. And I want to mention, actually, usually the max power point stuff is handled by a microcontroller. But when you're dealing with such small cells, you don't have enough current to drive a microcontroller. It'll use all of your power budget. So this is why you want the charger itself to do the max power point calculations for you. Um, only thing about it that is you just got to watch out for, I mean, if you're, if you're designing this into a product, I'm sure you can deal with it. But it is a 0.4 millimeter pitch BGA. Uh, so personally, that's, you know, for me, I'm, I would have to go with like a four layer board and, and you have to go with like very small vias um, because 0.4 millimeter pitch is small, but this is designed for wearables. Uh, it's designed for very, very small devices that have like micro uh, solar cells in them to let them charge and then uh, perform sensor you know, readings and then transmit that data. So it's small. It doesn't have a lot of pains. It just doesn't have even that much configuration required, which I really like. They kept it simple uh, and very straightforward. It, it's small. It's like it's 1.6 by 1.2 millimeters. It's like a speck of dust. It's small. All right. Um, you can get this on DigiKey. Mm -hmm. That's why we're doing INMPI. That's right. And uh, the short You've also got URL. the eval board. Yeah. Check it out. Short URL is there, and the product number is there, and every single week we do this. We do also have a video that Lady is going to narrate. Yes. It's uh, sped up twice as fast. Okay, i got to tell you something cool about that. The reason I picked this video is check what they have as the radio on that dev board. Does that look familiar? It does. It does. That's our LoRa breakout. So they're using one of our LoRa breakouts. Um, so they just, I like this video. We sped it up, but it basically just shows everything on the eval board. It shows the super capacitor. Um, it shows, this is that inductor because it is, is a boost converter. So it's, you do need one inductor, but it's pretty small. It can be incredibly efficient. And of course, we're going at very, very low voltages and very, very low currents. Um, they also have a nice little animation video here uh, telling you, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a harvester. It's meant to be shaded and lit and it's, it's, it'll, it'll turn on whenever there's enough voltage and current for it to start charging. Um, that's why a supercapacitor is really good in this case because uh, it'll, it can charge up very quickly. Um, it's not as sensitive as a LiPo, but, you know, of course, you can use a LiPo as well. And that's this week's INMPI. Hi, INMPI.